Numerous cities and countries have banned the use of plastic bags while still allowing the use of paper bags. Plastic bag bans are never enacted just to appear green or more caring about the environment than everyone else. Instead, the decision to ban is always based on an objective, unbiased study called a life cycle analysis, LCA for short. A life cycle analysis examines not only the end of life, but the manufacture and service life of a product to determine its overall environmental impact. LCAs are great, but there's a problem. They're loaded with lots of scientific jargon and statistics. It's easy to get lost. I thought it might be interesting to make the LCA live through a quick tour of how each bag is made. To make a paper bag, you start by going out into the forest, cutting down some live trees, and transporting them to a paper mill. This requires fossil fuels. The paper mill then grinds up the trees, pulverizes them even further into pulp. With the addition of water and chemicals, along with some electricity, usually generated by fossil fuel, natural gas, they're made into rolls of craft paper. Rolls of craft paper are then transported to another factory, which prints the, the paper, then sends them to another machine, which forms them into a bag. And when you got 900 cases, you back up the truck and you're ready to send the bags to the supermarket. This whole approach is called the out of line process because you have to go through several steps to make the product. As far as the end of life, there's three possibilities. The paper can be discarded above ground, in which case it will break down. You can compost it. You can make bags out of it again, or chipboard or corrugated. If it ends up in the landfill, it really doesn't break down. This is a misconception that paper does break down. It doesn't break down because of the absence of oxygen and the presence of methane. For example, we know a lot about how Chinese chariots were made about 2,700 years ago because they buried a bunch of them in mud. Not much oxygen to combine with. The reason we know a lot about a governor named Vindolana along Hadrian's Wall is that he discarded a lot of his memos into the landfill. The methane has preserved them perfectly, so the Vindolana project is learning a lot about specific things that happened during his administration. To make a plastic bag, you start with fossil fuels, either natural gas or oil. A misconception is that plastic bags require a lot of barrels of oil to make. This is totally false. Reason is that if you start with oil, you have to start with what's called naphtha, the very best part of a barrel of oil. This part of the barrel of oil cannot be made into gasoline and other petrochemical derived products. To make the raw material, which is polyethylene, you extract what you want, which is good old C2H4, or ethylene, C2 for short. Make big chains out of them, which are called high-density polyethylene. These pellets are then transported by rail to a factory, which takes the plastic pellets and makes them into a, blows them up and makes them into a tube, then prints them and seals them all in one step. This is called an inline process. The only fossil fuels that are used are the fossil fuels required to make the electricity. There might be some solvents that go out into the atmosphere, but the trend is definitely towards water-based inks, which are much more environmentally friendly. As far as end of life, well, high density polyethylene is 
about the most recycled of any plastic. If you recycle it, you can make a lot of other things like truck bed liners or any number of things. If the plastic is disposed of above ground, the ultraviolet will break it down. If it goes into a landfill, we don't really know what's going to happen. There is a misconception that it will take millions of years for it to break down, but this is not true. Polyethylene has a half-life of about 350 years. Even though it's only been around 80 years, scientists are pretty sure about the half-life of polyethylene. How it's going to break down or not in the presence of methane, we really don't know. One thing is for sure, the landfill contribution for plastic is a lot less than that of paper. Now, nobody really needs a life cycle analysis to know that paper is good and that plastic is bad. Governments who have decided to ban plastic have made the decision which results in a lot more trees being cut down. This is a very good thing.